What's up people, my name is Anton and welcome to September. Today is going to be a little slightly shorter video because I'm currently preparing a new content series um, documenting the entire art direction process from start to finish. So it'll be the idea of like brainstorming a look and working from beginning to end, um, working on texturing, a load of environment stuff. So it should be really cool, high quality content. So I'm taking a little bit of time out of my day to sort of improve that for you guys and provide you with just a little quick tip today that I found the other day and it's actually a really cool way of creating some new lighting techniques inside of Octane and that is exporting your canvases as EXRs from Photoshop and then using them as HDRIs inside of Octane. So you actually have quite a lot of freedom with this but if we take the gradient that we made in an earlier tutorial it is literally as easy as heading to image up here making sure our mode is in RGB and we're in 32 bits per channel and we can literally hit file save as select exr here save our gradient or our image somewhere and then when we're in octane creating our octane sky like normal making sure we've got the type set to primary environment here and then when we load in our texture we literally need to locate where our exr is so for me it's just here dragging it in making sure we're hitting yes selecting srgb or rather aces and we have complete freedom here to manipulate light however we want. Um, we can rotate this around, if we, if we make this material maybe a more specular material, you can see we start to get some really cool looks. Um, it's also important to note that Octane as a render engine um, prefers HDRIs for rendering rather than individual light setups. Um, those of you who may be more, maybe more experienced will realize um, that if you bake your lights as HDRIs, your render, your render times will shoot down because Octane actually prefers it way more. So it is an alternative to getting more interesting looks in your um, in your projects by substituting the um, the processing power. But it isn't just gradients like this that you can do, even if you wanted to hop in here and just do a, for example, if we made a, I don't know, 3840 by 2160, we made a 4K canvas and literally had the background as black with some, <clears throat> multicolored sort of lines running through nothing too fancy but quite literally something like this with some interesting lines maybe a little bit of pink and some sort of red at the bottom we could go about exporting something like this literally hitting file or rather making sure our image is in the right set so RGB and then 32 bits per channel hit merge hit file save as making sure we're hitting EXR and then HDRI2, make sure we're saving that, hit OK and whatever comes up. And then it is as simple as making sure we're back in C4D and then replacing this file just here with whatever we just saved. And we can literally drag this in like we did before, make sure we're hitting yes. And you can see we have our new HDRI in and reported. So as you can see, it gives a really good way of manipulating light. You're able to really have a lot of freedom with the way that you create materials as well. Um, obviously, bear in mind that they work hand in hand. Let's turn the roughness up and the HDRIs may not patch properly at the top and bottom, but nonetheless, when you're creating environments with a load of complex textures and you don't want to use octane lights all the time, this is a brilliant alternative. So having said that, I hope you guys enjoy this tip. I hope you find it useful and I'll see you very soon with some new high quality content. Thank you for watching.